Welcome everybody to yet another virtual happy hour, although I will say our happy hour is a little later as we're recording on a Sunday evening. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since uh, we've been able to go outside and enjoy beers on patios at breweries. And one of the breweries who has expanded their patio, in fact, they have put up a big ass tent in their uh, field at the back of the brewery is Church Street. And I wanted to get with a couple of my guys who have been co-hosts with the Britain Yankee um, Craft Beer Podcast for a while. Uh, and that is the man with the do-rag on his head, Mr. Ken McMullen. How are you doing, Ken? Uh, I'm doing all right. Back's feeling pretty good today. Got a yeah, couple of good. street brews that are lubing it up nice and well, nice and <laughs> <laughs> nice one. And below us both, and I, and I say that only by virtue of the Zoom picture, <laughs> is a uh, head brewer at Church Street, Chuck Fort. Welcome back to the show, Chuck. Cheers, Phil. And what if it, okay. okay, so you you've got a beer in your hand that you're drinking um and you can tell us about that in just a second in fact we're all drinking church street beers um and that's the reason why i wanted to come back and have a chat with you because it's been what probably two months since we've talked and uh you've continued to brew and what you've continued to also do and we were hoping that uh, jace ray who is your taproom manager and basically all a go get a guy right yeah, he's our marketing dude. Marketing dude, there he is. Hopefully he was going to join us, but um, he may join and them. jump in later, so that would be good. But, um, you know, I said to him, hey, listen, can we do a chat with you guys? Because it's been a while since we've talked. You've come out with all these new brews, of which I have four of them in front of me, and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the styles that you were doing because they seem to be different to the classic traditional – church street approach which is not a bad thing and right. um you know I, I think we wanted to find out exactly how you're doing this during this lockdown period and managing to keep your beer on the shelves so before you jump in i'm going to open my my beer of the evening which is called egg lay egg lay Egg lay. Okay, thank you very much. So while I'm opening this, Chuck, can you tell us about this? Because this is a classic beer, right? Yeah, so this is, this is a, a Baltic porter. It's a little more, actually, it tastes, it tastes very much like a porter, uh, but it has much higher alcohol. So uh, it's around 10%. Um, it is? It, uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. For people that like stouts or, or darker beers, they, they should really like this. Uh, um, there we go. It's not it's beautiful. I would say that it's not exactly a, a true Baltic porter. The style will have a little more black malt in it than this one has. This one, this one actually tastes uh, like a porter, really, but it's a lager rather than a rather than an ale. Oh, it's a lager. Is yes, that it is. So is that what Baltic porters are? Generally speaking. And so, uh, you know. Well, those, they are or they aren't, not generally. <laughs> they are. They are. And, and uh, you know, the Slavic folks and the Russians, they, they like their beers a little higher in alcohol. And, and uh, so there you go. So I, I understand that Baltic porters came about after the IPA went a little bit flat. The market went a little bit flat for IPA back in the late 1800s. And so they turned their attention to the Baltic states, that was the Brits, and they decided yeah. to brew a porter that was heavyweight, or was it heavyweight when they brewed it, and it was just higher alcohol because they had to ship it uh, out to the Baltic states. Yeah, yeah. Alcohol helps. Alcohol helps. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, you know uh, the picture now this is according to this a collaboration actually with illuminated is that right yes yeah so brian over at illuminated uh, said he wanted to do a collaboration and so uh we kind of put our heads together and came up with this one and uh we're pretty happy with it uh, yeah i mean uh, well i can taste the alcohol in it it's not quite 10 chuck it's 9.5 according to the label oh, oh, okay i'm sorry and speaking of the labels, um, who 
actually designs these labels because this has got a rather uh <laughs> I, I wouldn't say not grim but kind of scary looking woman with a crown on her head you know it everything starts out pretty much okay but then it gets a little edgy at some point that that's uh um uh andrew's wife nicole does all our artwork for us and uh she gets bored just drawing all sorts of like frilly things so she starts out with something but then, it, then at some point it gets a little um a little dark uh you know, speaking of like a little that. dark <laughs> ken what are you drinking <laughs> what have you got there uh, Father damien he has no eyes well it looks like he might oh. have red eyes or, i don't know he does um <laughs> But it's a they're like laser beams. It's a sour. <laughs> I'm thinking is it raspberry? Uh cherry yeah, and raspberry. It's got raspberry. It has raspberry puree in it. You got that one right. So what so, uh, this is my second beer. I couldn't wait anymore. So sorry. <laughs> you had the forbidden fruit and I had the forbidden fruit earlier, and we'll talk about that in just a second. So we've got a heavyweight classic, bought it porter. Now you've gone to Father Damien, which Tell us the story behind that, then. Oh, Father Damien, so um, that's that's Sean's beer. Now, Sean is Lisa's uh, son, and Lisa's the owner of Church Street. And Lisa's son, Sean, is the head brewer at Berkus, which is a brewery uh, near Cincinnati. He came up here, and uh, we made this sour using uh, using yogurt cultures. and uh, Yogurt? Yeah. So, you know, yogurt has, you know, all sorts of different cultures in it. And uh, that will sour things up pretty well for you. And so we did that. And um, after we made it, you know, in order to, you know, with the whole fruited thing, I think, in our opinion, is, is we have to go after the female market. There's a lot of female drinkers out there. And they like uh, fruited beers, generally speaking. Now, not all of them, but uh, in general, there's the, the female market is, has not been really, um, it hasn't had a lot of attention paid to it. And so it's, it's, it's there for the taking for anybody that wants to do it. And, and it seems that sours, beers that are more, uh, I don't want to say they don't taste like beer, but they almost have more of a wine cooler like character to them in a way. Remember wine coolers, like, you know, 15 years ago, they were really popular and, and, uh, yeah, now it's, hard, now it's hard seltzer. Well, if you looked at the wine coolers, most of them said malt beverage. They were actually beers. Um, it's just the way you market it. But uh, in any case, we're actually doing something similar. And uh, by adding these uh, different purees, you can get, uh, especially with a sour, you can get you know, something that tastes similar to a wine cooler. And, uh, and that seems to be uh, certainly something that we we're tapping into a little bit uh, with our fruited beers. So. There it is. So how, how do you like it, Ken? Give us your uh, overall well, impressions on I, it. I, I would take, I would take uh, Chuck's analysis of the market and, and say that actually, you know, there's a lot of women that like, you know, IPAs and, and I mean. Oh, yeah. To me, what you're going after with fruited beers is the, it's more the entry level beer drinker. Uh, I mean, that sweeter palate, that's what everybody starts with. I mean, if it, yeah. I've said this many times, like with wine, you know, if you start drinking wine, what's the first wine you drink? It's probably not a big, you know, a big uh, chewy Cabernet, you know, you're probably drinking a fruit wine. And, yeah. And then as you develop your palate and you get, you know, you start enjoying more of the flavors, you move on to more nuanced flavors. And I think this, oh, I'm getting, am I chopping up? We can still hear you. Okay. All right. Cool. Anyway, I, I I think this is this is delicious, Chuck. It's not really that sour. Um, it's it's got a nice raspberry tartness to it. Um, yeah. You know, it's the alcohol. I think is pretty solid. What is it like seven and a half? Seven. Yeah. But yeah. that's a nice beer. Thanks. Yeah, it's um. Yeah, I'm not a I'm not a super marketing expert, but but just from what I see, that seems to be what's happening. I'm not sure. Uh, to me, it, it reminds me of the wine colors of the past in a way. 
Yeah, we, yeah. we've no, we've noticed you're not a, a marketing guy by your um, notation on uh, what the female uh, people like to drink. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm just going by what my wife and her friends like. That, that ah, there you go. What it is. So there you go. I don't know. <laughs> there it is. You've also got one that's called Forbidden Fruit. And, uh, yes. you know, I, I, I poured that out and tasted that earlier today. Um, that one has, according to the label, uh, apricot or apricot, as you might call it, and peach, right? Puree. Right. In it. So yeah. um, I, I poured that one out and I found that to be, it looked like a hazy, right? And it is an IPA. Correct. Um, and I thought it was not quite so citrusy as the hazies can be. It was more of a definite fruity tartness to it. Uh, not sour, tartness, and uh, it was okay. I mean, it was a little bit not in my ballpark. I enjoyed it, but I don't think I'd order another one. So that was so, the that was the first one I had, and okay. uh, I thought it was pretty sweet. So I'm, I'm I I know I asked you this before we started recording, but it does have lactose in it, right? Uh, a little bit. And then when when did you add the fruit? Probably in secondary. Yeah, yes. And it didn't, uh, the, the fruit did not ferment out. That's a good beer. It's really, you know, today it's like the weirdest June day. It's like low yeah. 60 or something like that. <laughs> I know, I know. Man, if it was 80 or so, that's a killer beer. So yeah. what, when you said it doesn't ferment out, uh, what do you mean by that in the brewing process? Well, if you add the puree early enough, the, the yeast will work on it and, uh, well, chew up some of the sugars uh, in, in the uh, puree. And in this case, it was added later. And so uh, that's probably why it's a little sweeter. So let's turn our attention to the beer that you're drinking. And I have a, one of these. I haven't opened it yet. I probably won't, not after mm. this 9.5%. And that's Vic Ministry. Um, you're drinking that. Um, that's a single yeah. hop IPA. So is it a smash? Uh, single hop, single malt? Yeah, that's Vic. That's uh, well, it's Victorious. Uh, Vic, <laughs> it's Vic Secret Hops. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's one hop, basically. Uh, I, I like doing those once in a while just to see what a certain uh, hop variety tastes like. Mm -hmm. And is this a collaboration with anybody? No, it is not. It's part of our ministry series, and so uh, we do various things with that. In this case, it was just, we had a lot of big secret hops. And so, sorry, go on, Ken. Oh yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'm you saying, didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> have you, by the way, have you, have you noticed how in this, uh, uh, lockdown scenario, everybody started doing these zoom things and the, and the most embarrassing point is when everybody thinks somebody else has talked or they talk over. Right. It, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, if Jace would sign on here, we wouldn't have that problem because he talks all the time. Oh, yeah. there you go. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, none uh, of us would be talking if Jace was on here. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so what I was going to ask you was what the profile of, you said Vic Hops, is that? Vic Secret. Secret. Vic Secret. Kind of, it's like Victoria's Secret, but it's not a lingerie, it's a hop. And it's not out of business. Yeah. Oh, like Victoria's <laughs> Secret. Yeah. Are they out of business now? I, I want to ask you, now that Victoria's Secret is, I think they've either gone out of business, bankrupt, or they've closed most of their places down. What are guys ah. going to do on Christmas Eve at the last minute to find gifts for their wives? <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, Amazon. <laughs> Amazon. Yeah. Um, you appear to have been brewing a lot of beers. These are four new ones that have come out in the last, well, I think it's been in the last, what, eight to six weeks? Yeah, it, it started, we, you know, there was a, we had a lull for about a week in March or late March. And then uh, it, it didn't last for very long. And all of a sudden, uh, we're brewing a lot of package. Everybody wants to, you know, can their beer. Um, and you brewed sanitizer too. Yeah, we did that. Brewed um, sanitizer, come on. <laughs> we did a lot, yeah. But we blended it up. But, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so tell us, tell us the story of the sanitizer. Things started to slow down, and uh, Joe, who's you know, 
the owner's husband, Joe, is a chemical engineer. And uh, so he decided that we were going to uh, blend up some sanitizer. And uh, it wasn't too hard. He had to do a little bit of research, but um, we canned it. And the problem with canning the sanitizer is everyone thinks it's beer, you know, or, or they get confused. And so, you know, we we did some cans and then uh, we switched over to a uh, gallon containers, which is what we're doing now. But as as business starts opening up again, we're hoping that uh, more people order it. Right now, we have quite a bit on hand. But oh, look, look at that! Who, look who's joined look at his name. It's Jace. <laughs> How you doing, Jace? Can you hear us? Oh, well, I've got to unmute him. Now, now we won't get in a word in edgewise. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Sorry. Hey, dude. Oh, yeah. You look like you've had a busy day. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a busy, what? Here, show them why it's a busy day. This is why it's a busy day. This little guy right here. All right. Oh, splendid. Uh, there we go. Yeah, he's yeah, got the same hairdo. It's in your bedroom. Go get it. All right. Well, that, that's why it was busy. Sorry, guys. Welcome to the show. Now, I was we, oh, were, sorry. No. we were talking about you. Now, you are the, uh, you, you seem to be the go-getter guy at Church Street. You're the marketing manager. Uh, anything <laughs> else you do? Clean up, toilets, whatever. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Jace of all trades. Oh, there we go. Uh, we have been talking about the four beers that we've had before us here that we've been discussing. Sure. Tell us what led up from a marketing perspective to you being able to push out these new beers? So one thing I have to say is like how ingenious. So if, you, if your car starts to break down, right. And, and you know, the oil needs changed or you know that your car tires are flat. You might know that, but you don't know how to fix it. And you take it to a professional that forbidden fruit. It was a beer that was sitting in the <laughs> tank for months on end. We didn't know what to do with a normal person like me, a normal marketing person like me says, all right, you dump it, you dump it, but you never dump beer, right? You never dump beer. And then somebody like Chuck, who has a true understanding of what beer is and how beer really is made, understands no beer is ever bad. You never dump a beer. It's what, what, what would be the, the key phrase? It's just not done yet. It's not bad, it's just not done yet. So he takes a, a, a three month old beer that was an award winning beer last year. And he says, you know what? It doesn't quite taste right now, but I can make it better. And I have so much respect and just so much, uh, I would say understanding, but I don't understand it. He said, you know what? Leave it in a tank, let me fix it. He added peach and apricot to that beer, and it's one of the best beers I think we've ever had, ever, at Church Street. I learned that from some of the fruit beers that we've been brewing lately, though. I realized that, you know, fruit dominates all other flavors. It really does. Absolutely. <laughs> something that Chuck said, something I've heard before is, beer isn't bad. It's never bad. It's just not done yet. So, so we did, awesome. um, before you came on, uh, we were saying that Chuck said, oh, it's a shame Jace isn't here because he'll never shut up. And <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm drinking the Baltic delicious. Porter, Egglay. Oh, the the Egglay, yeah. Which is a hell of a title, I can tell you. What, what, what I love about the Egglay, does it stand? What I love about the Egglay is that it's a Baltic Porter. Yeah, and we know. So, okay, hang on. Hold on. We've done all that. What's the bloody title of it? What, is it, what does Egglay mean? Egglay, again, so we have a marketing manager, not me, but a very feminine <laughs> marketing manager that says to Lisa, we need more women empowering titles. We need more women empowering. We are a female-operated and own brewery. Egglay, she's an Eastern European god of beer. That's what she's a god of. <laughs> well, when you make a Baltic Porter, which is Eastern European, what else are you going to name it? You name it after the goddess of beer, and that's it. <laughs> so, what, what can you tell? What can you tell us about uh, Father Damien? Because that's what uh, Kem was drinking. Um, yeah. He was enjoying it a lot. Again, it's a very dark uh, approach to something, especially the label. So, where does that all come from? 
you know, we, we, we really like are committed to our appeal at this point. We are Church Street and we have a very, we have a very specific appeal. There's church, there's heaven, there's hell. We make a sour and one of the titles we, we kicked about in the sour, right, was um, uh, the passion of Christ compels you, right? So we didn't quite go with that one. But Father Damien, who is the patron saint of beer or whatever it is, uh, it is the same title as the guy in The Exorcist, who's Father Damien, who is what? An alcoholic having a problem with beer? What do we do? <laughs> we, take it, we run with it and we say, you know what? You're known as a brewery who really plays it by the book, but on this one, we're going to take it one step further. We're going to take Father Damien. We're going to hollow his eyes out. We're going to we're going to make everyone remember the last five minutes of The Exorcist. Whatever you know, like people people go crazy for title, label, name. They go crazy for that kind of stuff. So, but but, but in all honesty, the it, it when you crack open the top, that's when you find out whether you've got a good beer. And Ken, do you like it? Ah, oh, it's delicious, man. Good. good liquid. <laughs> good liquid. Right. So, so uh, I want to find out from you, Jace, what you're doing during this period now where we're allowed to drink outside and then what's next in the next phase, which I think is what? Phase five, phase four. I lose track. I think next phase is phase four. Is next okay. phase. <laughs> phase so is on stun. Yeah. Uh, what we're doing now is we're hosting a lot of people outside. Everyone wants to be outside anyway. It couldn't have been better timing um, for patio season, right? And what's so funny is like when it rains, it's a Monday. When it's sunshiny, it's a Friday. It's crazy. Like the past three weekends have just been amazing. And we're just, we're really trying to push our patio. And I know you've been, uh, Phil, you've been out to our, our patio. It's looked great, right? We have yep, I, I got a couple of pictures will be put up on this video behind you. Keep talking. It looks good. <laughs> it, we, we got a tent up. We got a patio. We got 22 tables outside that are four people each, 22 tables. We didn't even have that inside. At our peak, we didn't even have that inside. I think this is really helping us build our outside scene. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of great breweries around us. Wolf Den has a great patio. Um, but I think this is forcing us to to compete with what is the outside scene, and I think I think we're really killing it. I think people are coming out and they're enjoying the acre and a half of field that we have, the barrels we've cut in half with with umbrellas, the 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 you know white and green of church. Was you cut with a handsaw? I literally cut with a handsaw. Uh, <laughs> Chuck goes. You know that's oak, right? I'm like, yeah, I know it's oak. And he goes, well, you know, it's going to take you a while, right? Two and a half <laughs> hours later, I have fucking barrels cut in half. That, that's the <laughs> barrels that you... Uh, okay, yeah, I saw those barrels. They're pretty took cool. Took a while. Took a while. Chuck wasn't wrong. But, you know, <laughs> no, we, uh, we cut them in half. We did everything for you guys. I mean, we're, we're doing a lot to try to make everybody comfortable, safe. That's a big word. We want you to be far enough apart that you feel safe. But we also don't want you to feel like you're walking into a CDC, like quarantine zone. We want you to feel like you're comfortable, you know? Yeah. So um, we, have, we have the room for it. So that's what we're doing. Yeah. And, and you know, you have, have you seen a drop in the number of aircraft that go over you? Because I should explain that you're fairly, fairly close to flight paths of O'Hare. No, not fairly close. We are directly underneath a flight path. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Bill Gregor, the guy who is behind, the genius behind all of our sanitizer, has, has his phone out just plugging away on how many passenger jets come across every 90 seconds. And uh, we've seen a huge uptick on how many planes are coming across. And we take that as a good sign. If people are learning to travel again, that means they're learning to go out and drink again. And if they're drinking again, hopefully they choose to drink at Church Street, you know? Cool. I think Ken has a question for Chuck, though. Yeah, Chuck, I uh, I used to collect cans with my brother back in the late seventies, early eighties, and I, you got a nice collection there behind you. Why don't you tell us about it? Uh, okay, yeah. So 
I started collecting cans when I was 12. When I, it's really when I first got into beer was, was when I was 12 years old. And, uh, you know, we used to uh, collect the cans and we would keep the tabs. We would open them from the bottom and the tab would be on the top still. So my parents never knew if the cans were full or not. That was kind of a neat thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's where I started, got a, started my beer career. And uh, I used to go around and find cans and I would pick them up and I would smell them. And I could smell the darker beers and the lighter beers. And that, that's really where I got my start in brewing. And, and you can see I've got older cans and, and younger ones. And here's a, here's a Budweiser. Look at that. Does that even look like a Budweiser? But there it is. And it's so old, it has instructions on the back that tell you how to open it. Chuck, where did you find cans at? Uh, I would ride my bicycle uh, along the, around the country roads, or I would go into the woods and uh, uh, just look for places that say no dumping and start looking. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, guys, thanks very much. We're going to conclude our video portion of the show here. Um, thanks very much indeed for uh, coming on and letting us know about some of the new stuff that's going on at Church Street. Uh, hey, yeah, uh, Jace, uh, tell us details where people can find you. Oh, yeah. Uh, so every single one of our new beers are uh, put immediately online or on our patio. So you can either show up at Church Street on Industrial Drive in Itasca, or you can order a beer at churchstreetbrew.com. Um, we're, we're, we're literally here just to give you beer. So you contact us and we'll make sure you get beer. Cool. Well, I'm going to say cheers to Church Street. Ken? Yeah, cheers to Church Street, guys. Yep. Yeah. Cheers to Phil and you guys and to Brent Yankee and Jason and everybody else. And Jason is the only guy who doesn't have a beer. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's one. Hey, play. there he goes. What do you got there, Jace? Five rabbit. Oh, no, Great Lakes. Mexican lager. Very Lager's good. Cheers. Well, cheers to everybody. Take care. <laughs>